Okay, the regular council meeting Monday, September 15, 2014, at 7 p.m. on outcome order. Roll call, please. Mayor McLaughlin. Here. Mr. McIntyre. Here. Mr. Zambach. Present. Mr. Reynolds. Here. Mr. Rick Lowry. Here. Mr. Craybacher. Yo. Mr. Mike Lowry. Yo. All <laughs> present. Yo. Uh, uh, before we continue, if you have a cell phone, if you would please turn it off and put on vibrate so it doesn't interfere with the meeting. Certainly appreciate it. We'll now have the invocation by Pastor Andrew Wright, Church of the Brother. At least I think it's Reverend Wright. Brother Andrew. Thank you. Dear God, thank you for the day. Thank you for the work we do, for the livelihood we have. Thank you for the families, for friends, for people. Thank you for the ability to talk and converse and argue and debate. And at the end of the day, go home and all is well. We thank you for peace in this town. We thank you that we can disagree with each other uh, uh, without fear of uh, retribution or violence. We think of uh, other places in the world that are just torn up with strife. For us here, God, please bless us. Please keep us peaceful. Keep us able to really just enjoy one another and, and appreciate one another. We thank you for this town. We thank you for this leadership. Bless this meeting in your name. Amen. Amen. The joining the Pledge of Allegiance is the flag in the back of the room, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I well, thank all of you for being here. Thank you for being here this evening. I certainly do appreciate it. I uh, may I have actions of the minutes so of the moved. regular meeting, September the 2nd, 2014. So moved. Second. Right. Steve John. Go. I read my did I, did I hear a second from Mr. McIntyre? Mr. Reynolds. I think Mr. Reynolds. Did. Okay. Are you ready, sir? Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Craybach? Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Mr. Zambach? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Minutes past seven to zero. Thank you. All right, any communications this evening? None this evening. Thank you. We'll go to the city manager's report then, please. Okay, thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, tonight, we'll start out with our finance discussion and our finance director, Mrs. Harris. Thank you, Ms. Jones, Council, and Mayor, people involved from public here tonight. The um, August financial report is as follows. Our total revenue we took in in August was $761,267.76. Our total expenses we took in for August was $577,714.58. Uh, so far, our year-to-date revenue collected is $3,556,771.89. And our total expenditure so far year-to-date is $3,228,358.65. And I wanted to make a little note here that we are really trying to watch our expenditures now for the end of the year, um, going into our last quarter. And we have <coughs> about 73% of our revenue today, and we've only expended about 67%. So we are trying really, really hard to just keep up with the uh, necessities at this time. Uh, we do have set aside for debt payments that will be due at the end of the year, $315,000. And with our income tax uh, receipts, we brought in $79,358.52 for the month of August. And this is our first month in a few months that we've had a small increase in our income tax receipts. Year-to-date receipts are $724,502.30, which is just a very small decrease from this time of last year. 
Anyone have any questions, please? Yes, Mr. Robbins. Uh, I want to thank you, Ms. Harris, for giving us the uh, audit book. <laughs> so that's yes. the first time I've been on council we got it. But I have a question. Are we addressing some of the issues that the management letter at the very back had stated? Yes, and we just received these last week, and, and I apologize when we got out in training for our new software, and I haven't reviewed, but at the time that we had met with them, before we got this printed copy, we have already um, addressed more than half of the issues of trying to get those in compliance by the end of the year. And we're hoping to have all but probably the fixed asset program. All right, that thanks. That was a budgetary issue. Yeah, I was just reading it today, and I came across some of the, like, some of the things. I was like, oh, so thanks so much. I'm sorry, let's address that for us. I matter. just wanted to okay. point out that this is for last year, yes. though. So yes. just keep in mind, um, Mrs. Harris is doing a great job of addressing a lot of the problems. And we have similar goals as far as wanting to not have any dings on the report in the future. So she is working really hard towards that. Oh, yeah, I know, I know it was before she yeah. got here. So. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Craven. Well, unfortunately, you know, that's, that's their job. So there's always going to be a ding. It's like the health department has to find a ding. You know, uh, a couple of the, I was going to bring up some issues too, Ethan, you know, also, was um, about the swimming pool. Several of the things was about the swimming pool and controls, you know, and the inventory and also the um, pool passes. You know, if, I, hopefully that's going to be taken care of in the next coming season. That was addressed this season already. That was always addressed. Yeah, this we season. knew about that at the end of the last season. So that has all been addressed before we opened this year. Okay, good. Um, going back to the tax collections, I, you know, you know, I'm going to be a real stickler about that in the next little bit while, and uh, and uh, some of it sounds good to me, you know, and it it says uh, non-filers to individuals will be completed by September, the, the week of September the first. Total non-file individual mailing will be roughly 1,400. We have 1,400 people that is behind. That uh, is. Um, It looks like it is. Um, he is staying very tight on the collections and, and bringing into um, the mix of our standard, you need to file and you need to pay your taxes, some additional letters that our law department has helped him create. But yes, we have, um, and it's, the 1400 could be a combination. It could be one for one year, a year ago, another one for this year, a different person for two years. It's a, it's a wide group that he's contacting. And we're, we've had a lot of good response with um, maybe 10% uh, at this point where they are coming in and making payment arrangements um, on the taxes that they do. The non-filers are getting them caught up. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it is working, the, the pressure's on, and then we're seeing some results out of it by collecting ourselves. Formerly, we had an out-of-state company and uh, it wasn't doing as well so we've gotten our hand back in it and we're, we're trying to uh, increase yeah. that so very, we, we will keep it updated every month yeah. i'm very proud of you, you know, for doing something and um it says um something about the businesses you know uh, i think there was a rumor some time ago that the businesses wasn't even paying paying their share so are, are you actively going back even the businesses that might have Gone out. Up to can, a can certain, you collect those? Up to a certain, um, and I think even the mayor um, or the manager Kim Jones has some updates. But yes, we have contacted <coughs> many of the um, businesses here in town that have not been paying their taxes, and um, we put some um, verbiage. We also have um, the next step to that. We've got about ten of them that are going to small claims court this month. We haven't done that in years. Um, so we are addressing them, and we're getting everybody to kind of wake up and pay their, their fair share that's okay. due, yes. That's fantastic. Okay, thank you very much. Yes. Mike is even going door to door, knocking on people's doors. Mike's pretty intent. You know, he's, in, he's intimidating. He's intimidating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we, we talked him into driving the city car so that when they looked out their window, they could see it was a city employee, because I would be afraid to open the door too if I didn't know <laughs> who he was. But he is doing a good job of doing that. So we appreciate it. Good to hear. Anyone else? Mr. Rose? I have one more question. It was on page 56 of the uh, budget report. It said that we had deficit spent on some of our funds. We spent money we did not have. Uh, 
didn't hear you. Uh, on page 56, it said that we had, we had been deficit spending on some of the funds that didn't have the uh, appropriate cash balance and we had spent it. <coughs> like, are those funds back into good standing? Or? Actually, we're still working on that. And, and again, this report is for the calendar year 2013. Yes. We just finished it in um, July. So some of the um, issues were already into this year, which is going to reflect on next year's um, audit. We came into this uh, beginning of 2014 with about three or four of the funds that were in a negative. Right. Um, we have been able to clean up most of them. And on the back page of your, your budget is a year-to-date fund report. That is the, the one that will reflect the beginning balances that were still in the negative. That was from the beginning of the year. Yeah. We have, um, just a few more that we have to clean up. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure like, we, we were addressing because I like, went through and read this book today. So. Yeah. And they, they actually didn't get transfers in at the end of the year to, to clean those up in time, so they carried forward and we're trying to get you know, all of that done by the end of the year also, so it, we can have a clean start next year. All right, thanks so much. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Thank you very much for the report. Thank you. Yeah. Also, I would like to point out on, on your question, Mr. Reynolds, that we weren't spending money that we didn't have. It was just money that was in the wrong funds, had not been transferred out of the general fund to clear some of these accounts up. Right. So there was still money in the general fund. It wasn't like we were in the red. Oh, no. Oh, it's yeah, just it a matter of certain funds. transfers not being done. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay, then we'll continue on with the uh, service discussion. Mr. Kitko, I didn't know if you had any updates tonight. Uh, just a couple. Thank you. Jones, good evening, Mayor, Council, members of the public. Um, I want to follow up with uh, Vice Mayor Lowry on the note of checking out the trails and a few more streets were repaired. There are some minor cracking. Um, it's probably a little, little bit of minor age and uh, probably some of this bad weather we had. Um, but we'll keep an eye on it. it uh, if they start getting worse, we'll get them sealed up so they don't progress. Um, you guys are out repairing more catch bases. We got two more. We had seven so far that uh, have been emergency repairs. That, uh, the concrete base, especially, especially uh, four of the seven, are on Main Street. And that concrete base that's underneath that asphalt is crumbling. Once we get cutting these out, it's getting bad. So I think ODOT will be back through about eight to 10 years to redo Main Street again. They do it approximately 15 years. Uh, the, to fund that project is 20% uh, match. Um, ODOT pays 80% of the uh, shave and pave of Main Street, and we pay the 20. Well, if anything on below the asphalt base or anything, that's solely 100% on the city. So here before too long, a lot of the repairs on Main Street have to be done by us, and those repairs are becoming more and more with the bumps you see, the expansion, like in front of New Pellet Federal, there's a hump in the crack. Uh, the only way to fix those is get into the base, and now what we're seeing is that concrete base, which I think was put in the early 50s, is starting to get real bad. And especially down by Wood Adult, we've seen some areas down there. We're trying to figure out what we can do there, and right now we're looking at completely cutting out the concrete underneath. And it's anywhere from 12 inches to 18 inches thick. So it, you know, what was probably a little inexpensive to put concrete down last year and then put asphalt on top, obviously is not the case now. So we're trying to find ways to uh, look at this eight years down the road or so to get that base completely removed and go to a standard gravel base where easier to repair, cheaper to repair. Um, I would just say they're doing an excellent job on the catch basins that they've worked on at this point. Oh, they they definitely need it. They look so much better and a lot safer. To see we are ways. grading those in. If, you're, if you look close, it used to be dropped down into those basins. Yeah. Just when they come milled and filled it back in, they didn't, care about, they didn't care about grade. So as we do these, we're putting a little more of a slope. So if your tire does go into them, it uh, shouldn't knock that in the line. Much, much better. Thank you. Um, I'd like to, uh, we will be, I will be getting a thank you letter together for um, Mr. Nate Doman. He is an Eagle Scout who installed duck houses down here by the open shelter on the bike path. Uh, there's four of them, and actually I thought he was going to put all four near the bank. Well, as you can see, there's uh, two of them on the other side of the swamp. So him and a crew, I just got his packet back last week um, to get his uh, information together for him so he gets his award and stuff, but uh, we'll be doing a letter for him for that installation. <coughs> and we're preparing for the festival. Signs, tents, 
top and whatever it is, we're getting ready. Uh, a bunch of tree trimming will be coming up. And if anybody wants a picture of the ash tree that's at the corner of um, Adams and Jefferson, get a picture because we're getting ready to take that down in the next couple of weeks. Uh, it's got the ash borer in it, and it's a safety uh, hazard to that home there on the on the corner. Like that, we're busy. I can entertain any questions. Yes. Mr. Kitko, I understand last week there was a gasoline leak at the Speedway station, correct? There was a what? A gasoline leak at the Speedway? Yes. Uh, how much did they lose in is the water field or the aquifer in any danger whatsoever? Because I've heard all kinds of reports from 5,000 gallons to 50,000. So um, and you know what I'm talking about. I, I yeah. don't know how much was lost. Here. According to the EPA, and the only reason they're really doing anything with the factor truck is because it is on the edge of our five-year time of travel. Okay. Uh, before I get into the answer, the, the aquifer flows from north to south. Speedway is on our very southern limit of the five-year time of travel. So uh, because it is in our uh, uh, underground water protection plan, uh, they're mandated to uh, get what they can out and put. What they have done is monitoring wells. They drill them and they're pumping out. Approximately when the alarms went off, uh, they think it's about 2,000. Okay. So far, they have backed out. Um, it's hard to put out different numbers, but they've got a lot out, and they're constantly pumping daily, and they're pulling vapors out too. So they're not just going into the water and pulling water; they're pulling vapors off of it. And they will also be paying for testing on our system one time a year for the next couple of years for total petroleum. So our drinking water will be tested for petroleum, just for that very, 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 very slim chance that it were to make it up that way. Okay, thank you. Yes, Mr. Kekko, on um, the, the street just slipped my mind, Galewood, coming up Galewood, I forget, I don't know the exact house address, but there's a few uh, curbs that are buckled up real bad, and I know that it's it's a type of curb where the, the uh, pavement doesn't come straight over, it's got a little bit of a, a lip over, you know what I'm saying? It's got a gutter fan to it, it's got concrete gutter and curb. Right, right. Is there any way that can be repaired before winter, by chance, or straightened up? If it's curb, it is a homeowner's responsibility. Okay. Unless we're going through and doing a total full project. Okay. But yeah, curb and gutter is responsibility of the homeowner. All right, thank you. Anyone else, Mr. Reynolds? How are we doing on saw? I know we discussed it uh, the last two meetings in a row. But uh, like, any new updates on how much it's costing us if we're able to partner? I have a minor update. Um, I, did con I did talk to the assistant um, Miami County engineer this morning. And we are eligible, barring any setbacks, to get approximately 70 additional ton at a little bit more than what their cost was because they'll be loading us and whatever we take up there. So they'll have a little bit of labor involved. Um, I think it's around 100 per ton uh, to get this salt. So we have 75 on hand. We are almost guaranteed to get another 70, and that's about where we set right now. We have another lead. But right now we're working on the legality of being between two bidding agencies on whether we can split salt between two bidding agencies legally. Because sometimes they don't want you with them if you're going to be uh, borrowing from someone else. So, does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. I had one more question regarding the water issue. I know maybe it was last year. There was talk that the EPA was looking at what went into the Honey Creek and they said it was high in, or could be high in something. I don't remember what it was. I was wondering if there's any updates with that or if that was just saying they were going to come do a test but didn't find anything. Uh, that's in the wastewater side of yeah. the house. Um, it's, it's been ongoing. They're in the very preliminary stages uh, for that. They just want to, they're actually looking at us to do a study. And, but we're kind of holding off to see what the rules will be. And typically rules take about five years to eventually, if they're going to be a rule and, and, and lawful rule, it takes about that amount of time to make that happen. Is there, because um, I know it's a wetlands and it's a really important wetlands for the area and probably has some species in there that need to be preserved, is it possible to get grant funding if we did have to do something because of the nature of it being an important wetland area? Um, most, or is that something we're looking at five years? Most mandates, as with any state or government ones, are usually non-funded. You might get a small one for some design or uh, study to see you're making sure you're going in the right direction, but 
that, you know, there's probably something small, but nothing near, you know, to cover what could be a three to four million dollar project. But that's years down the road, and we may not even have to do it. Correct. Okay. Anyone else? Mr. Kitko, thank you. Appreciate it. Continuing then with the planning and zoning discussion, planning director, Mr. Bridge. Thank you, City Manager Jones, Mr. Mayor, members of council, members of the public. I'd like to share with you the August 2014 activity for the planning department. We had seven complaints come through the office, brings our year-to-day total up to 45. 28 yellow tags, verbal warnings, and letting, uh, verbal and letter warnings were sent out, brings our year-to-day total up to 126. Uh, four by, uh, nuisance violations uh, in August brings our year-to-date total up to 32. We had 11 grass violations, brings our total up to 103. We did five property abatements, uh, brings our year-to-date total up for 27 abatements in grass, and then one abatement for nuisance. We had 20 zoning permit applications come through the office, brings our year-to-date total up to 80. Compliance for the, the month, yellow tags of violations were 88%. Year-to-date total was 75%. Nuisance violations to abatement were 100%, meaning that none did go into a, 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 to, to abatement status. That brings our year-to-date total up to 97. Our vi grass violations to abatement was at 20%, brings our year-to-date total to 74. I'd like to share with you some of the work that I'll be working on. Um, I put with uh, the packets, members of the council, a little condensed version of what certified local governments um, there's some interest through some council members about uh, City of New Carlisle maybe looking into doing this. For those of you who do not know what a certified local government is, it's a way for a local government to get involved in the National Historic Preservation uh, projects that go on. Um, I reviewed the program requirements. There's a lot to comply with. The big thing is that it requires 40% match. With valid initiatives in November, is this really the best time for this program? I'll leave it up to council for you guys to decide on the direction to take on that. <coughs> We've got some good news out of the sidewalk replacement program. Uh, Year-to-date totals on that so far, we got 32 permits come through the office. Uh, that equates to about 115 panels that have been repaired or replaced. Uh, these numbers may increase. I've had heard some uh, residents doing work without a permit. So to fully gauge the uh, success of the program here in a couple months, I'm going to walk up there and physically count uh, what ones were fixed and what was not. But I tell you what, for the first year of doing this without going and abating properties and doing it ourselves, I don't think we could have asked for a better response. So thank you citizens out there who did take the time to replace those. Um, I will meet with Amy Donahue. Amy Donahue is Director of Hiring and Employment Service with the Springfield Chamber of Commerce. Um, on your sheet it says September 26. We did have to reschedule that date after the time that this report was made. So we will meet, be meeting on September 23rd. Uh, we'll be visiting downtown uh, business owners in the city to discuss HITS, which is hiring, initiatives, training, and space. Uh, right now, we really want to bridge the gap between New Carlisle and Springfield. I really want to look at Springfield successes and practices and how can these be applied and successfully, successfully in New Carlisle. Some of the things when we look at is, you know, better way to market our businesses and our hiring needs, find out exactly what the problem is. Is it lack of soft skills? Is it lack of transportation? Is it lack of quality jobs? But I think in combination with uh, myself and working with Amy and then you know going through the Springfield Chamber, we hopefully can get a little success with getting our employment numbers up. Farmers market is still ongoing. Last day of the market is September 27th. And again, that's from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Main Street downtown. Got a small update for CBS. Their grand opening will be Sunday, September 21st at 10 a.m. Planning Board did approve a lot split 5 to 0 for Chrysler Dodge, uh, Chrysler Dodge Jeep on 821-14. Some of the things we got going on in the department for fall and winter. We're doing a planning and zoning code review. I'm going to get with my planning board and the Board of Zoning Appeals and members of the public. We're going to look at specific <coughs> aspects of the planning and zoning code and exterior property maintenance code that need to be updated and or added. Some of the big things we're going to be looking at is wood piles on property. What's too much? What's too little? Is it a safety hazard? Uh, sign codes definitely need to be addressed specifically in the central business. And then we're also going to look at some, maybe some recreational vehicle ordinances. I'm also going to do a housing survey. I'm also going to look into basic, vacant housing and landlord registration ordinances. And we're also going to prepare for the hanging flower baskets in spring of 2015. Vacant housing report is at 69, which is a little bit of a decrease. I think we usually average about 77 to 79. So I think uh, that's going down a little bit. I do believe that is all I have, so I'd be happy to entertain any questions. 
Any questions, please? Yes, please. I want to personally thank you for looking at the certified local government <coughs> issue. I know that was something we we had talked about and worked with Ms. Jones on it. And even though we may not be able to make it happen because of the matching aspect to it, it's great to know that we have another option if we want to look at historic preservation or bring some money in the town for some projects in the future. It's good to know that we have this resource. We know how to, to, to get the money or, or be a part of the program if, if we need to. So thank you. Anyone else? Yes. Um, Randy, okay, so the sidewalks. If if somebody's found that they did not have a permit, the sidewalk, what is, is there a penalty? Is there, is they just going to go and say no, no, or? Well, there is, at, when we passed it, when the council passed the last update of the ordinances, we did put on there a fee, a penalty for starting to work without a permit. Um, that's something I would get with Mr. Kitko about, and Ron Wright, who does the inspections, um, to find out, you know, how, how do we determine that they were poured correctly after it's already poured. Mm -hmm. um, so the short answer to that, we really, I haven't really thought that far into how we're going to hold those accountable. Is it something like no harm, no foul? If it's yeah. done, great. Um, or do we sock them with a penalty? Yeah. <coughs> okay, then what, where's the next area you're going to focus on? Um, that is, I really haven't planned that far ahead. I'd really like to do these things with how Mr. Kitko is going to do in some street repairs. Um, I think last time I had a meeting, it was on um, spinning and going across over to there. So um, probably, what section is that? Willowick, Willowick area okay. could probably be the next one hit. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Anyone else? I, I have one question for you, if you would. We talked previously about the sign on the waterbed store. An antique sign is that still going forward as far as you know it's still up in the air as far as pep or coke paying for it or not um it's right now it's in the um, upper stages of you know is coke going to pay for the mural to get done or not so until we hear back from coke corporate i don't think we're going to see any activity on that mural going up okay thank you sure appreciate it anyone else anything thank you sir appreciate it all right then our fire discussion with chief phillips Thank you, Mrs. Jones, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, citizens, and guests. For August 2014, the New Carlisle Fire Division responded to a combined total of 139 calls of service during the month of August 2014. Fire responses totaled 15, with an average response time of 5 minutes 28 seconds. The division responded to 124 emergency medical calls for service, with an average response time of 4 minutes 40 seconds. Some Elizabeth Township statistics. Elizabeth Township Fire and EMS responded to a combined total of 11 calls for service during the month of August 2014. Fire responses totaled zero, and emergency medical responses totaled 11. There were six responses to Elizabeth Township, one response to the village of Castown, one response into the city of New Carlisle, and one response made to the village of Christiansburg. Uh, some significant events on 8-11. There was a crash in front of the uh, Sports and Fitness Center. Uh, with a minor injury that was transported. Uh, our, our crews responded down to Bethel Clark uh, two times on the same address for reported structure fires. They did find a working fire both times. Uh, the fire was put out quickly by all crews involved on both occasions. Uh, on 818 uh, West Jefferson and Smith Street, there was a motor vehicle crash after some investigation. It was found the uh, individual involved in that crash did have a medical issue caused in the crash and that person was transported. Uh, on 824, our crews responded up into Northampton for Pike Township on a structure fire. Uh, that fire was brought under control quickly by the Pike Township crews with our crews assisting and uh, no injuries there. Uh, a few things I wanted to mention that aren't in the report. Uh, we did schedule our open house for October 7th. Uh, we're pitching it as our first annual, but it's, it's more of a first in a long time open house. Uh, it'll be from 6 to 8 p.m. There'll be free food, uh, tours of the station. You can meet the firefighters. There'll be apparatus uh, demonstrations, and we're also going to have a car there. We're going to be doing some extrication uh, demonstrations as well. Uh, I wanted to let everyone know in the city that our uh, fire inspector has been busy. He's been out inspecting uh, businesses, uh, and he'll continue that throughout the winter. Uh, we are not really in the business of causing any hard feelings with the business owners. We just want to make sure that they're compliant with fire code for the safety of the, uh, the patrons that come into businesses. Um, we are doing an, uh, a formal emergency versus non-emergency response study within the city. Uh, you'll see our crews uh, responding a, a great deal 
in non-emergency mode to a lot of the emergency calls in the city. Uh, there's uh, quite a few national studies out there uh, weighing the difference between an emergency lights and siren response with a non-emergency response in certain calls. Uh, it's becoming a safety issue more and more with the activation of emergency lights and trying to get through traffic. It becomes more dangerous for us. It becomes more dangerous for the driving public. So we're trying to do some weigh some options as to what our response is going to be to certain call types in the city, whether they actually need a, a lights and sirens response. Um, as far as the response times go, there's very little difference between an emergency and non-emergency response. Uh, on a lot of occasions, a non-emergency response, they actually show up quicker because they don't have to deal with the frantic people trying to get out of the way or the traffic problems that they cause with lights and sirens. So if you uh, see us responding in a non-emergency mode, that is part of that study. With that, I'll entertain any questions. Council. Yes, John. Um, what, say something about the poster contest? Oh, yeah. It's all about Thank you, Mr. Craybacher. Um, fire Prevention Week poster contest. This is something that the state fire marshal does. Uh, it's open to all uh, fire departments in the state of Ohio. Um, there is a flyer attached here. Uh, anything, anybody that wants to participate, uh, we've already met with our school officials here at the school in New Carlisle. They're already on board, so they're going to be pushing out the material to the school folks there. Uh, we've also, we work quite closely with the Buffalo Township Clark Fire Department. They've circulated the information around the schools down there. So uh, if anybody wants to participate, all the information's here in the flyer. Okay. And uh, Fire Prevention Week is? It will be October 5th through 11th. Uh, that's why we put, post up our uh, open house during that week. Oh. Uh, flyers are over there on the chair, by the way. But we will be doing uh, uh, quite a few things during that week. We've already got some stuff planned at the school. We're getting the uh, fire safety trailer from Wright Patterson Air Force Base. We're going to have that up there. We're going to run the kids through that. We're also going to, once we're done there, we're going to move the trailer over for our open house. We're actually going to have it at our open house as well. So anybody wants to go through the fire safety trailer, they can do that. Thank you. You bet. Anyone else? Yes. Mr. Phillips, I have a question, and it may very well be a question for almost every person sitting there. <laughs> and I believe it's a serious question, okay? Or at least I hope it is. It is to me. We wake up every morning and we look in the paper or we watch the news at night, and it's an unrestful world right now. There's a lot of countries out there making claims. Just last week we had a group of people claiming they was going to shut down the grid in uh, power grid in the United States. My question is this. We are approximately nine miles from Wright-Patterson Air Force Base as the crow flies. Is there any plan in place for a national disaster such as war, if this city was bombed, if Wright-Patterson was bombed, if the grid went out, I have not seen papers in any buildings or any maps or don't know where centers are to go for help or how to get out of the city. Is there anything like that in place? And like I say, that's for probably every person up here. I mean, and I think maybe we need to get that out a little bit more. Uh, I don't know what it is. I knew at one time last year, what was it, or a while back, just the firehouse for people that was in cold weather and had no heat. And, you know, but it's a bad world we're living in right now. There's a lot of strange things going on. And I would like to know for myself, and I'm sure there's other people who would like to know. Well, as far as the emergency planning goes, the, the, the amount of planning that it takes to manage those incidents is so large. A lot of that falls on the Clark County EMA, and we take our cues from them a lot of times as far as if a disaster actually happens. Now. On that note, they've, they've been working through their emergency support functions, trying to update their emergency support functions for each type of incident that may occur. Obviously, you can't plan for everything. Right. So there's some generic, I guess you could say, action plans as to what we're supposed to be doing. As far as pushing that out to the public, the amount of material that it would take to push every action plan out to everyone is so large, but we're, we're working closely with the EMA to try to nail down some, again, some generic planning ideas as to what should we do as a city of New Carlisle if an event such as that occurs. And again, we take a lot of those cues from the EMA 
because it, it becomes a network issue if it's not necessarily just the city of New Carlisle. It usually is something that impacts the entire county or the state or the, this part of the nation. Okay. So we kind of take our guidance from them. I have some informal plans in the back of my mind what I would do, but as far as us falling into that system, we have to fall into the NIM system. We have to fall into that federal emergency management system to make sure everybody plays on the same card when something like that goes down. Okay. I've got to be honest with you. I, that did not answer my question, and I don't mean that sarcastic. Right. Really, no, that's not the answer I was looking for, but I would dig farther and try to find out. And once again, that's nothing sure. on you or anyone else sitting here because I want to know if I wake up some morning or in the middle of the night, half this city gets blown away or Park Lane or something, what do you do? Right. And I think every citizen here deserves to know what that is, where you can go. Uh, how you can? How do you communicate with people? If there's no power, no electricity, how are you going to communi communicate and find out? Right. And, you, and do you understand what I'm saying? Right. And once again, that's nothing against you. Sure. I would just like to know that. Well, and again, there's certain aspects of the plan that we, like I said, we can plan all day long. But right. if, if it happens that part of our plan, where we decide to locate these people, has been destroyed. Right. Then we have to switch to a different part of the plan, and that's where our again that's where we start leaning on the EMA okay. because that's more in their wheelhouse than it is mine. Okay. I'm more of a specific disaster organization; they're more of a broad scope disaster organization. Okay. I'd like to think that I can handle incidents outside of my jurisdiction with the best of my ability, but my focus really is inside the city. Right. So when they decide, you know, what they think is best for us, then I take their part of the plan and start moving and focusing in it for New Carolina. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate sure. that. I have, sat, I have sat in with meetings with the EMAs as the chief has as well, and they do meet quarterly and monthly, and they, they like yearly, they pick a synopsis or a scenario of what if this happened, and then they countywide practice how they would react to that type of emergency. So they're, it's not just like a plan that's on on the shelf. They do actually practice those a lot, just like our own department practices a lot to be ready. And as far as telling everybody if there's an emergency, you go here, it's just like the chief said, it depends on what kind of emergency is and what has happened as far as you can't say you always go to the fire department or you always go to New Carl Elementary because you know they can be contaminated or whatever. So it's not I don't think it's real black and white. I think it yeah, has to be a fluid sure plan. Yeah. Right. You know, and I guess what I was getting at, for instance, you know, I believe if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, no matter which way you go to get out of New Carolina, you have to cross a bridge. I think on any road you go, you have to cross a bridge. I'm pretty sure. Uh, how do you know which way to go? Which bridges are there? Which aren't? And that's what I'm getting at, something like that, okay? Mm -hmm. Just how it would be communicated. And so, but okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Our WARN system is part of that, right? and we're still working to get that to be a better system. But as far as if there's an emergency and the phones are still working, you know, right. the number that you have selected to be contacted would be a way that we could get a hold of the citizens okay. to let them know. Okay. Thank you both. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Thank you, Chief. No Thank problem. You. All right, then, in our police discussion with Sergeant Underwood. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Mayor Council Citizens. In August, we have three groups for them. Support taken by New Carolina Baptist at 55, by 28, and 28, and October 8th. This is the House of Code 2066. There are 134 miscellaneous calls. We had 10 follow up investigations by the officers out here. Under traffic information, we had 32 traffic stops, issued 23 citations. We had three OBI arrests, there were five OBI charges with those three. We had driving under suspension, we had four. We had 12 parking citations. One vehicle was towed. We had four non-injury non accidents and four injury accidents. Under criminal information, criminal adult arrest, we had 11. Adult charges, there was one. Juvenile arrest, we had two, and there was two charges with those juveniles. Warrant arrest, there were 19. Now, that can be confusing, but I know at least two subjects that were arrested. One had nine warrants and one had six. So those are compiled in that. Uh, and we did file three warrants, outstanding warrants, along with that.
We had two assaults, one breaking and entering, seven thefts, no vandalisms, 10 911 hangups, no phone harassments. Domestic violence was with assault, there was three. We had six verbal domestic violence calls, four lockouts, 10 alarms, and 62 assists. And I just want to remind everyone, as a reminder, the Clark County Sheriff's Office will have deputies in and out of each Clark County school. This is on a daily basis, and that includes the city of Nicaragua's Middle School there. This is not only for the children's and staff, staff safety, but we have started our educational programs involving DARE and have some other uh, safety programs that we do. And along with that, I would like to report that Captain Eric Holmes was a past Nicolau police administrator. He will be retiring from the Clark County Sheriff's Office in the near future, probably next week. <coughs> Captain Holmes has always been a new, has always had Nicolau in his best interest and has done whatever he can to provide the best personnel and equipment for the city. We want to congratulate him on his retirement and he will be missed. Then, effective August 15th, 2014, Deputy Joe Weiss will be leaving New Perlau going back to Park County Jail. Deputy Weiss worked as a parole officer in New Perlau for the past two and a half years. And I personally want to thank Deputy Weiss for all he's done for me in the city of New Perlau. It's been a pleasure working with him and he's going to be your thoughts. With that, uh, I'll open it up to any questions. Please relay for all of council for both uh, Captain Holmes as well as uh, Deputy Weiss, so we definitely, Captain will miss the Captain for sure, and Deputy Weiss will miss him also, he did an excellent job for us. So I'll please relay to them, from all of council, I'm sure the staff as well. And thank you for them out there. Council, any other, yes, John. Um, just one look, just one question, sorry. To, August 15th, that keeps been gone a month. Has there been a replacement? Oh, they're looking to fill a replacement. We've had him replaced since he's been gone. Um, currently, we have Deputy Chad Hobbs up here. It gets a little confusing because we've had like five replacements in the last month up here. Uh, but it is covered. Uh, we are hoping to get his replacement assigned to us this week, uh, Joe's permanent replacement. And there's an interview process. And with the captain retiring, uh, it's just slowed it down just a little bit. So I, I was hoping to have an answer today for the meeting, but uh, didn't get it done. Anyone else? Yes. Uh, before Deputy Weiss um, went back to the county jail, I talked to him, and he said that there was an incident at the um, oh the old Madison Street School where they had word that someone was about to break in. He was able to go there and found the tools that were there. Um, I don't know if an arrest had been made. I, do you have an update on that or any information on whether or not they caught the guy who was breaking in or if it was he ran before he saw the... No, we haven't as of yet. We have had some reoccurring problems up there at the school. Um, last time we talked about a lock that was placed on the door and uh, it did not belong to the city. We did not know who put that lock on. And we did find some items inside and as of this time we have no suspects. It's as far as I know, now investigations, uh, we'll be looking into that. Um, it's sometimes our communication are a couple of days off. Yeah, I know you guys are very busy. Uh, when I was talking to him, he got called on a, a domestic violence issue. So I know you're, you're taxed then. So we do appreciate you looking into the, this but we, ongoing We do control situation. the school, the old school, as much as possible. Um, so if anyone has any tips, or has any clue to what's going on down there, please call me or let me know. Anyone else? Sorry, yes. Ms. Jones, kind of go over what Sergeant Bill was just saying. The city, did you say, was looking into um, wireless cameras for the facility? We've already gotten two quotes, and they're a lot more than we want to spend right now. Um, but he's going to come back with a more mobile type of camera that might be less expensive so we're still waiting to get that but that's going to be for the school if we go that direction well with the big mobile we'll be able to use it a lot of places that we've had problems so okay. that that would be ideal to be able to put it where people don't know that it is and move it around a lot okay thank you mm -hmm. i just got one more thing yes um sergeant um the other day there was a, a young man and a young lady was going around 
knocking on doors and asking for a certain person, you know, in my neighborhood. <laughs> yes, I'm familiar. Yeah, in my neighborhood. And then they sat outside my house for a, a long, you know, pretty long time. And I said, that person, I don't even know who that person is. You know, and, you know, there's a lot of retirees you know, in, my, in my neighborhood. My question is to you, if, I, if you see some, somebody like that, should you call them the deputy or, you know, or just wait till they leave? No, you, sh you should give us a call. Um, you know, it's a city where a lot of people know what's going on. But from time to time, we have solicitors come in. We're real close to the interstate. We have solicitors come in. Um, they are supposed to have a permit. That's not always the case or we have private detectives coming in on some of our domestic violence issues. Um, so yeah, by all means, let us know. It just takes us just a short time to make sure they're legitimately there or not. Well, then, like I said, they were young and they were looking for, they asked for a specific person. Just then, for then, then you look out in the car, whether it was a truck, you know, and there was one other person out in the truck. To me, it looked very suspicious. And they stayed around probably a good half hour, 45 minutes, you know, just sitting there in front of the house. You know, time, time is really not a factor. If you think they're suspicious, it doesn't matter if it's five minutes or an hour. We'd like to receive a call on it so we can find out. Um, Saturday, we had a uh, suspicious vehicle of, of business in the area. Um, there were two individuals in the vehicle and we got the call they were consuming alcohol and they'd been on the lot for a lengthy period of time. Um, and they had been. We checked them out. Uh, they're actually the beer cans were Mountain Dew and a friend was overdue to meet them and they decided to park on the business lot, which wasn't a good choice on their behalf, but we kind of shooed them along and, and had them park on the street. Uh, and, and generally that's what we run into, but you never know. That's why we like to check them out. That's why we have so many warrant arrests. We're, each time we check someone, we check for a warrant. And it's surprising me how many people that uh, when we check has warrants on them. So that's a good way for us to pick up people with warrants on them also. Okay, thank you for the information. Anyone else? Um, since you're here in the city manager, disposition of the sheriff's car that was wrecked, how, are, how is that coming along? Uh, Mr. Kitko handled that. Do you want to explain it? Uh, we had the adjuster come out. We, we went through our insurance and came out. They towed the vehicle. They're uh, in the process of managing to check for $15,750. Uh, the original cost of that vehicle back in 2008 was $27,000 without the outfit. And the outfit's about $7,000, $8,000. So once we receive this, uh, our mechanic is currently removing all the, we get all the gear off of it and radios and stuff. We're currently outfitting uh, a, a crown victim way for a backup, a light bar and radio and stuff temporarily. Once we receive this check, we're looking at the options because you're well aware of the budget on what we can do with that amount of funds. Because right now to get a brand new vehicle again is approximately 35,000 to, to get on the road. So that's what we're looking at right now. We're just unsure of the procedure we're looking at. Hey, thank you for the update. Appreciate it. Anyone else? Sergeant, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you, Victor. Hey, on to informational, and I have quite a few things to talk about tonight. It must have been, for some reason, everything came in the mail at the same time. <laughs> um, we talked a couple weeks ago regarding Time Warner not showing our, sh our council meetings on their public access any longer and we changed and are now using the DATV channel which is part of Time Warner. Um, I got a letter that on or about September 9th which was earlier this week last week um, Time Warner is switching where that public access and government access channels will be from where they originally had put it two weeks ago or two months ago. Um, so if you cannot find it on channel 5 government access uh, look at 5.103, it's a digital channel. That should be the government access channel from now on, 5.103. And I'm not sure why they're changing it, but I just wanted to pass that along. 
Ms. Jones, doesn't it state on here too that if you if you can't find it, you, you may have to go back into your menu and rescan to pick up the additional digi digital channels. It'll probably load it and you'll probably find it then. Thank you. I didn't catch that. Yeah. I don't do that at home. <laughs> you don't do that at home. I don't do that, no. Yeah. I can't use the remote. Okay. Um, also in your packet is an email from Clark County um, Community Housing Development. And uh, they wanted to make sure that we knew uh, with our recent CHIP grant, which is the Community, community Housing Improvement Program that is handled through the Community Development Office, um, they have actually targeted New Carlisle and Park Lane as the areas where they want to spend most of their money. So if you are aware of a homeowner who needs money to help with home repairs, um, of course, it's a lower income homeowners and that will be, you'll have to fill out paperwork. But um, I do encourage you to contact me so I can give you the number and you can contact the county and, and see if you would qualify to get this money that they've set aside to help our neighborhood. So it's for home repairs and owner rehab rehabilitation. So I'm thinking it's things like furnaces, hot water heaters. I don't know if it would go as far as roofs. But I would definitely encourage people, if you have a need and you are lower income, you know, to check to see if you qualify because the money is there and you might as well, you but might as well take advantage. What do they consider low income, if I may ask? Um, do you know that? Often? They did not give me a dollar amount for low income, but it normally is 30. I don't know the exact thing off the head, but it's a certain percentage of low income. Right. One day Mm, I don't think it would apply for sidewalks. Okay. I'm not sure. Just on an ass. Home repair, owner, re you could check. It's probably, it's mostly for things that are of urgent. You know, you can't live without your furnace, can't okay. live without right. your roof, right. that kind of thing. I would think is what they want to use the money for. Okay. Um, also in your packets from Clark County Combined Health District, I have three different items from them uh, this month. Uh, first is their monthly report. Uh, secondly, they are um, holding rabies vaccination clinics at the western side of uh, Clark County on September the 23rd. It will be at the Park Lane Elementary School at, uh, from 4 p.m. until 7 p.m. The cost of the vaccination is $10, cash only. They also are doing microchipping if you have a, a desire to do that for your pet. Um, so if you have any questions about that, give me a call and I can get you a copy of this flyer. And then lastly, from the Clark County Combined Health District, uh, we've got their recent 2014 seasonal flu clinic schedule. They will be in New Carlisle twice again this year. Uh, October 6th, which is a Monday, is their first uh, visit out here. And that will be at the New Carlisle United Senior Services on Sunrise Terrace. And that would be 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. They are also out here on Saturday, October 18th, and that time it's at the Honey Creek Presbyterian Church on West Jefferson, and that would be 10 a.m. till noon on Saturday. If you can't meet any those two clinics, they have about a dozen other clinics throughout the county, and you also can get your flu shots at our weekly clinic, which is also at the Honey Creek Presbyterian Church. It's every Wednesday they're there, 8 a.m. 8 a.m. until noon or the first Tuesday of the month, they're here from four to six in the evening for people who are at work during the morning and can't make it. So there's plenty of opportunity to get your flu shot. They are accepting insurance coverage. Um, so you bring your insurance card in and they'll help you with that. Continuing with the management report, uh, the next income tax issue committee meeting will be on Thursday, September 18th. It will be here at the Shelter House at 10 o'clock in the morning. That's yet this week. Before you continue on that, um, how many people do we actually have on the committee at this point? Do you know that are active? There's different people each week. Um, I'd say we have about six. So we could use more people. We could to use 60 least. more. <laughs> so right. yes, we encourage you if you're in, interested, we'd be glad to have you come and help us and share your ideas and we're just getting to the point that we're going to be ordering flyers and sign yard signs so we'd appreciate your input on that we um, could use some donations for that as definitely well definitely could we use donations to help pay for everything yes we have a very small budget so yes thank you 
In your packet also is a flyer regarding a racing for Grayson. And I had just told this lady I would pass the information along to let people know. Um, it is a 5K uh, run slash walk. And it's to help the um, a little girl named Grayson who, uh, Grayson, who has, um, I'm not going to even try to say this syndrome, Octahara. I'm not sure what that is. But I know we have a lot of people that like to do the runs and are interested in fundraising. So uh, we have these flyers up at the city building. Um, we encourage you to do stop by and pick it up. And that uh, 5K is on Saturday, October the 25th. And that is a morning start. I don't think she's got the start time here. Sorry, I don't have that. But we'll get that if you need it. OK, continuing with the informational. Um, there is a memo in there regarding Christmas holidays. Now, we had talked about the lunch a while ago. Um, this memo, we've never done this before. The county has done this before. And the union contract, actually, generous as they are, says that we are allowed to do this. <laughs> we would like. Um, I would like permission of council to close the city operations on Friday the 26th. We are closed on the 24th and the 25th right now for the Christmas Eve and Christmas holiday. Rather than open for the one day, I, was, I would like to ask permission to close for that additional day, just this one time. Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> yes, sir. Make a motion. City offices will be closed on December 26th. 26. I second it. Okay. Any discussion on that? Yeah. I got a question. Uh, I think Mr. Zambach, let's ask Mr. Zambach first. Go ahead. Uh, are we closing with pay, in other words, an additional day off? An additional day off. <clears throat> that wouldn't be charged back against I hadn't the many, planned, many days off. I hadn't planned on it being charged against them. Right. Normally, we have a minimal staff on that day anyways. It's people are using their vacation and whatever. So I just thought rather than get everything going for one day and closing it back down again for two more days, it would be nice if we could do that. Yes. Um, my, my one question is in January, is that gonna be the same problem? No, I wasn't planning on, we, we'll just, we'll, well, we're not, we're not closed for two days before the first, like we are for Christmas. You see what I'm saying? It's just a one day off for, New Year's, for New Year's for New Year's Day. We're not closed New Year's Eve, <clears throat> so we would be there Monday through Wednesday and then Friday that week. But it it won't January first fall in the same. It's on a it's as, on, as, as as Christmas. Sure. It's on a Thursday, just like Christmas is. Yes, but it's so not. We'd be closed that next Friday, Bob. So. No, I wasn't planning on it because it wouldn't be five days in a row. I was just saying. With the Christmas, instead of being closed for two days, opening for one, closing for two days, it seemed like it would be a good idea if we could close for the five days in a row. New Year's Eve, it's not the same thing because we're not going to be closed for two days and then open for one and then close for two. So we're, you're not closed New Year's Eve? We're not closed New Year's okay. Eve, no. Because okay. he's right. It's yeah. the same day. It's right. the same day, but it's not two days that second week. Okay. Yeah. Any more discussion? Can you call for the vote, please? Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Mr. Zambach? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Craigwell? Yes. Thank you very much. Pass seven to zero. I know the staff will appreciate that too. We have a lot of people that travel out of state, so that will be nice. Before you go on, also, since we're we just discussed employees. Uh, have we replaced the member that passed away here recently at this no, point? We're uh, so in the we're process. down. We're down employee at this point. Yeah, we're, we're three people at the wastewater plant right now. Right. Okay. We have uh, posted the opening, and um, we already interviewed the current employee who was qualified, who who had the licensing that's required, and then we've chosen to go ahead and look outside to get, try to find somebody with. A little bit more experience so that is posted till the end of the month end of september is that correct correct it's in this uh, it was in yesterday's paper next sunday's paper and i have it on uh, the water training website till the end of september 
Um, so far, I've only gotten two applications for it. It's a very experienced, uh, minimum five years type right. thing. So. You were superintendent, okay. correct? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for the answer. Okay, uh, continuing with informational, the payment drop box. You may or may have not have noticed that our drop box that had been outside was in very, very sad shape. If it rained, everything in the box was getting wet because of the angle. We couldn't fix it so that it would not leak inside. The plastic outside with the envelopes was broken. Um, it was about ready to fall over. It was going to cost us $3,000 to replace that water, that box. Three, it was over $3,000. So what we chose to do instead was put a box inside. It cost us $200. I've had in my suggestion box <laughs> people who are not happy that they had to come inside. But that was the reason that we did it. We still had the convenience of being able to pay your bill when we're not open. But you do have to come inside. But I could not justify $3,000. I agree. If people would have quit running into it, it would have helped tremendously. It seemed like they ran into that thing every week. Right. Unfortunately. So just to get the word out that we're not trying to be inconvenient for people, but we're trying to be cheap. So that is why that we did that. No, frugal. 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 That's right. Word frugal. Right. The two items that are not on your report I wanted to bring to your attention. I was at the Board of Elections on Friday. I'm picking up information for the absentee ballots and to get people registered to vote. And the uh, ladies working in that department said they are in desperate need for poll workers for the city of New Carlisle and also for Bethel Township. That is a paid position, although I don't know how much, but they do need um, the, or the people to come in and do that. Um, if you're interested, I've got phone numbers. They got little poll tags that you can take the phone number and and call them. You do have to be a registered voter, at least 18 years old, uh, registered in Clark County to work at the polls in Clark County. Um, and you can work at any precinct in the county. They say they have comfortable, you have to be comfortable with new technology or willing to receive training. You get paid for the training and for the day you work. So, I mean, it's, I think it would be fun. They have a really neat thing that you can do too. Um, if you want to be an election worker and donate your salary to your organization, like the Rotary or anything like that, they have um, capability of you doing that. So I have paperwork on that too. So if anybody is interested in that, please check with me. We've had a polling change in Newport also, have we not? I was not yeah. told yes. that. I the think, poll? was it not moved the to the Newport yeah. School, I believe? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think one and two now, I saw that in the paper mm -hmm. just recently. Is you should, you true? probably will get notification, I would think. Yes. Normally a postcard is mailed if your precinct Yeah, they'll, they'll send out notification. Um, I don't think they've been put out yet. But I saw that in the paper, they okay. were changing because of the handicap. Uh, so, um, they do have a website you can go on. They have a lot of information on the website. They might sh tell you where you go to vote there. If well, not, two, I, I give school. them a call. That's right. Um, last thing I wanted to bring up that was not on your packet, in your packet, was uh, a real estate assessment fund. On Friday, I received a letter from um, John Federer, our Clark County Auditor. And uh, according to uh, Commissioner Dietrich, this is something that they do every three years. They reassess the money that's in that fund. I've never heard of this before, so maybe in the past we never, they didn't have a um, surplus. But um, this, at this time, they determined that there was a significant excess in that fund. So over a million dollars, and um, they have just, just decided to distribute that um, to the jurisdictions within the county that pay the different taxing authorities who pay into that fund. And they prorated it based upon the amounts that we had paid into the fund during 2013 and 2014. So the city of New Carlisle will be receiving uh, 5500 $5, $5,510.76, which I mean, it's not a lot of money, but we'll take anything. So that, that was a pleasant surprise um, we weren't expecting. Um, and that is all I had. If there are any questions.
Any questions for the city manager? Yes. On the 5K form on the back, it lists the time. It's um, the you. run starts at the New Carlisle Sports Fitness, and it's from 9 a.m. until noon. Thank you. And they also have a list of the different raffle prizes you can get. So it's a very minutes. generous 5K. There's tons of prizes. Yeah, there's a $50 gift. There's a number of $50 gift cards and a $100 right. gift. There's a lot of stuff. Right, so. right. So, and it's going for a good cause. So, I encourage you to participate. Thank you. Anyone else? Are you out of breath? Oh, I have a sore throat. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that's the most that you've had to talk about. I know. About Sometimes time. we don't have anything. <laughs> you did a very good job. Thank you. Oh, thank you. All right. We'll, we'll go on now. Uh, committee reports tonight. Any committee Not reports? Tonight. Resolutions, Comments. if you would, please. Comments. Mr. Mayor. Comments? I'm sorry. What? Comments from the public. Oh, I beg your pardon. Thank you for reminding me. Comments from the members of the public. Anyone like to speak this evening? This is your time. No? Sorry that I missed that. Thank you for reminding me. I did go over top of that. So there are none. Uh, no committee reports tonight. Resolutions. Resolution 14-11R, a resolution accepting the amounts and rates as determined by the Budget Commission and authorizing the necessary tax levies and certifying them to the County Auditor. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Will we adopt Resolution 14-11R? Second. And this is a, a one we do every year. The Budget Commission met after we had um, submitted our tax budget to them. They reviewed it. And now this is just the final step um, to get our tax budget set for 2015. Thank you. Any, any comments, questions, counsel? It's about this long. About four pages. Yes, a, lot of, a lot of places you have to sign, Mayor. So. <laughs> All right. Yeah. If you would, please, if you call for the vote. Mr. Rick Lowry. Yes. Mr. Craybar. Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry. Yes. Mayor McLaughlin. Yes. Mr. McIntyre. Yes. Mr. Zambach. Yes. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Pass seven to zero. Thank you. When you get a chance on the ordinance, please. Ordinance 14-45, introduction, public hearing, and action on 10-6-2014. An ordinance authorizing the city manager into a renewal intergovernmental agreement with the Board of Clark County Commissioners regarding wastewater services. Council. It's, it's an introduction. Oh, I beg your pardon. I, I must be asleep tonight. <laughs> that might be what it is. Beg your pardon, man. Thank you. Okay. All right, other business. Other business? Anyone have any other business? I have one. I need to ask the council members who would like to uh, be involved in the parade. Uh, are going to be participating in the parade, I guess is what I need to ask. I think you are? Yes. Right? No. Would you please give her a call? She didn't. She was waiting for her call. For her. Oh, I had called her and dropped off her paperwork today. So. Okay, you're all set. Yep. Okay. Anyone else plan on being in the parade? Well, I am, as far as right now. All right. Do you have a vehicle or so forth, or do you need something at that point to be in the parade? You guys usually supply vehicles. I voted with Dick last time. Yeah, I'll, I'll let Mrs. Ruteri know that you would like to be an officer. Anyone else? Yeah, Roll, Rolls Royce. Uh, I don't think we're going to get a Rolls Royce, but you can, you can wish. The DeLorean. <laughs> if so, I'm riding with each other. You could pull a Del DeLorean that I know of. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to run. It's really hurting my feelings. Oh, uh, John. Okay, you're going to be awesome. Or we oh. might have a spare wrecked cop car laying around. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, would you like to read the others there, please? If yes, you Mayor. Thank you. City offices will be closed on Tuesday, November the 11th for Veterans Day. There'll be a joint government meeting Monday, September the 29th at 6.30 p.m. here at Smith Park Shelter House. The New, New Carlisle Crime Watch meeting will be Wednesday, October the 8th at 6.30 p.m. here at Smith Park Shelter House. Heritage of Flight Festival, October 3rd to October 5th. The Festival Cruising will be on Friday, October the 3rd, from 4, 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. The Play to Parade, Play Parade of Planes. There you go. <laughs> yeah, we're all stuck on the night. I think it's that 
those, <coughs> all those department reports. No, I all think what it was, the city manager sort of, you know, went on and on and on. I'm not excited. Let me try this again. Parade of planes. I challenge anybody to say that 10 Parade of planes. Planes. There you go. You got it. Will be, uh, will be Saturday, October the 4th at 11 a.m. And election day will be Tuesday, November the 4th. And keep in mind, there's a very important city income tax on that ballot. That's all Thank you. Uh, Mr. Lowry, would you like to talk about the Heritage of Flight Festival? Yes, it's canceled. No, yes, uh, just like you said, it's uh, going to be uh, 3rd, 4th, and 5th of October. Uh, our next meeting will actually, the council meeting will be the day after that. So uh, me, Lowell, and April, and probably some city members will probably be on oxygen in that meeting. But uh, uh, There's going to be a lot of new uh, things this year at the festival. Uh, fireworks is going to be the biggest thing, Saturday night at 9 o'clock. And I definitely just want to thank a lot of the citizens of New Palau that, that put in donations for the fireworks show through our website. Uh, it, was a, it was a big help to get that accomplished. Uh, Gene Collier come up with a great idea with Bill Barry this year to add a flight pageant. That'll be our first one, so uh, that should be pretty interesting. Uh, American Legion's always there helping us out with a lot of things, and they're going to have Team Fast Tracks jumping before the parade. Uh, you know, the big American flag as they jump out of the parade right over Main Street. All kinds of good things, so uh, make sure you guys stop on up and check it out. And who's going to be here again for little cars and so forth? The Shriners. Oh, the Shriners, yes. The Shriners will be here for the parade. Sally does a good job with that. Yes, she does. Anyone any comments on the parade or anything? Okay, election day, Tuesday, November the 4th. We have a tax on the ballot. Would we like to discuss that at all this evening, how important it is? Anyone have any comments about that that they would like to discuss? Yes, Mr. McInerney. In that same conversation I had with, with Deputy Weiss about the, uh, the issues in town, we had a discussion about the police cruisers and the one that was out of commission. I believe there was another one that was having issues. Or, and, and he said that it's really unfortunate because New Carlisle could be deprived of, a, of, of having a good, reliable vehicle. We'd still have coverage in the area. You're not going to be without police force. But not being able to meet those requirements to get good vehicles is not something that we want to look forward to in town. I think when uh, we had a problem with one of our EMS systems was down, and people were, had a lot of was very apprehensive about what we were going to do about it, and we rectified that situation. At the same time, we're looking at police cruisers that are damaged or destroyed, and we have to be able to, to get those back onto the streets as soon as possible, because if you have an issue, you, you can't wait for the highway patrol that might be on the other side of Springfield to get there. You need a deputy there now, and having reliable vehicles is a way to do it, and they cost 30 something thousand dollars to get one. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, yes Mr. Zamba. Uh, Mr. Kitko mentioned earlier that we have a, uh, an expense that we're going to be looking at for street repair uh, on Main Street. Well. If the cost of the deputies are sucking up all the money the city brings in, and we have to put money in 235, using this as an example, just about all our street repair money for the next 10 years is going to have to be set aside towards that unknown, extremely high cost. So it's, we need the deputies and we need the streets. This is to guarantee us that we'll have the deputies, and that will free up other funds to help with the streets and other necessary costs of just operating our, our city yeah, for our own benefit. And I probably hate to pay taxes more than anybody else in town, just a conservative estimate, but we need the money. It will affect me, uh, but we just must move forward and I do endorse it. Thank you. Anyone else? Any other comments? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Just a reminder, voter, voter registration is October the 3rd is the deadline to register to vote if you want to register. Thank you. Um, would you like to speak a little bit more on what what the actual income tax is about and what it's going to be used for again, if you would, please? Um, sure. It has been designated that all the money that will be uh, brought in from the extra half a percent uh, income tax um, will be designated only for police expenses, and after that, anything that would be left over would be to streets only. 
So that would free our general fund to be able to do other street repairs, um, other the uh, municipal parking lot, the cemetery, things that need that we have to put on hold. Um, some of the equipment that our employees are using right now is <laughs> they just replaced the back. Was it the back of the dump truck? They had to put a new. I mean, it would have been nice to buy a whole new dump truck, but we couldn't do that, so we had to put the new back on. That's just the kind of thing that we've been band-aiding for so long, and it gets to be a safety issue for the employees and the public to have equipment out there that is not, I can't even tell you how old our um, front end, the, what's the one we just had fixed? Um, yeah, the backhoe that we use for every water main break, and. I mean, and the cemetery and everything, and that thing is probably from the 60s, isn't it? Or, or back to the 94. 94, I'm sorry, but I know our wastewater equipment is from the 60s. Yeah, I know it's from the 60s. <laughs> but anyways, the, the, the need is very real. Um, we are very frugal, we won't waste the money, so um, I just, I can't say it enough how much it's needed. I, I don't even want to think. We've had slight discussions on what we would do if it doesn't pass. It's not a happy discussion, so we don't like to think about it, but we have had to make plans should it not pass. So um, it's a grim picture. Services will have to be cut because we just don't have the money and you can't keep spending if you don't have the money to do things. So our costs keep going up, and the right. money that we're receiving keeps going down. The salt is up. Well, state, right now. state, federal keeps cutting, cutting, cutting on us. That that's the problem that we're into, mm -hmm. that we're coming into. Yes, Mr. Lowry, you wanted to say something? Yeah, I was just going to touch on you know something that gets brought up also with that same subject is you know why do we need a tax for roads and police when we just passed the the street levy? The street levy was. If a lot of people remember, was it wasn't sold as it was going to fix every street. It was just a, a levy to for seed money to go after the grants to help us, you know, inch us along and get the streets fixed with grant money. So, you know, and that that only brings in, I believe, a uh, hundred twenty thousand a year, approximately. And I don't, I'm not sure if this number is accurate anymore, Howie. But for example, Edgebrook to be completely re reconstructed is pushing almost a million dollars, like eight hundred thousand or so. Uh, over a million now. Is it over? All okay. So, I mean, that's just one street. I mean, it's a long street, but, I mean, just to give you an example, the levy's bringing out 125000 and you've got one street that's over a million to fix, so. And that levy money is being used right now. Mr. Kitko mentioned it earlier that for all the storm sewers that we're being able to use that money because it's a repair of a street. So, thank goodness we have that levy money. Otherwise, I don't know, they would still be falling apart. Mm -hmm. And we would have cars and trucks falling into them, which has happened. I mean, you can break that axle going into some of those. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a good situation. Anyone else? Anything else with anyone? Staff, anyone? Out in the audience, anyone like to say anything? Okay, again, thank you all for being here this evening. Our executive session, we have none tonight. Mr. Mayor. I would entertain that. Yes, I'm going to